control the amount of light that enters our eye. Actually, it cuts off the light, not control. It cuts off the amount of light that enter our eye. For example, whatever light is incident on our eyes, 90% of the intensity of light is cut down by the cornea. Only 10% of the light is allowed to fall inside the eye. Okay. So your front, front portion, which I have made here, this is our cornea. So side by side, I want all of you to draw the diagram and label them also. So this is our cornea. Then here we had discussed that these two portions, which we say they are the diaphragm of the stretched cells, stretched tissue, which we call as the iris. So this is the colored portion, which we observe. This is our iris. I had explained these two structures even when uh, by from the front position of the eye. Then here we had seen some structures like this, which we call sclera. So something we had seen here white muscular tissue, a white muscular tissue we had seen and this white muscular tissue is called sclera. It's called sclera. Then here we have the lens. This portion we call as the eye lens. Your eye lens. Then our eye lens is attached to the eyes with the help of some muscles and those muscles they are called those muscles they are called so these muscles with which our eye lens is attached to the eye these muscles they are called ciliary muscles so our eye lens it is uh, it is a crystalline lens, but it's not just like your glass. It's not a glass lens. Okay. So it can be compressed. It can be stretched. Right. So the property of the lens to be compressed and stretched is given due to the property of the ciliary muscles. Due to the ciliary muscles. So these are our ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles, they help in compressing the lens or stretching the lens. Can anyone tell me what will happen by compressing or stretching the lens? Yes, what will happen by compressing or stretching the lens? I guess it's it will... focal lens. Yes, okay. we will be able to adjust the focal lens. If we compress the lens, we will be able to decrease the focal length. If we stretch the fo uh, stretch the length, then we will be able to increase the focal length. Okay. Now see, why do we require all this? At the back side. So this is all which we have here. At the back side, starting from there. So starting from here, we have a layer of tissue on the back side of the eye, which we call as the retina. So retina is the layer which respond to the intensity of light, which respond to the image that is formed. So whatever image is formed, that image is formed on the retina. So this whatever I have drawn with this yellow color, this is our retina. So what is the function of retina? Sir, it's a screen, sir. Yeah, it serves as the screen. It has, the retina has some cells. These cells, they can respond to the amount of light.
so retina it contains the cells which we call rod cells and corn cells rod cells and corn cells the names rod cells and corn cells they are given on the basis of their shapes the rod cells they are rod like like this the corn cells they are like cones something like this so the name they obtain as rod cells and the cone cells the rod cells they respond to the intensity of light they respond to the intensity of light intensity of light means brightness of the light so that means they are able to justify you are able to justify the things that which object is dark which object is bright so that uh, that situation is optimized by the rod cells Cone cells, they are specialized for color sensing. They respond to the color of light. Okay. So, road cells, they respond to the intensity of the light. Cone cells, they respond to the color of light. And our retina consists of both the road cells and the cone cells. Okay. There is a spot just uh, at, the, at the below portion of our eye where we do not have any road and corn cells. You can observe that this is the spot where we do not have any road and corn cells and this spot we call as the blind spot. So this spot we call blind spot. The reason being here we do not have any road and corn cells. So will we be able to observe any image if it is formed on the blind spot? No. No, sir. No. No. We can't see if the image is formed on the blind spot. The reason is that there are no road and cone cells. So if there are no road and cone cells, so no one will be there to respond to it. Okay. The road and cone cells of the retina, they capture the information of the image. So suppose if you have, if you are observing here a tree, so this image of the tree, it is formed with the help of this lens. With the help of the lens, the image will be formed on the retina. On the retina, you will have the formation of an inverted image over it. You will have the formation of inverted image on the retina. So here you will observe an inverted tree like this. And our brain will interpret this image to be of straight one. Okay. So all the images, they are formed on the retina. Now since you have studied about the lenses, so you know that uh, the distance between the lens and the distance between the retina is always the same right it's not changing are we changing that is there any change in the distance between the lens and the retina no sir no so every time the image distance is the same every time we have image distance as the same but the object distance is changing okay so to have the image distance constant, even if the object distance is changing, so we must be able to adjust the focal length of the lens. We should adjust the focal length of the lens so as to have a real and inverted image always being formed on the retina. Otherwise, sometimes the image will be formed before the retina. Sometimes the image will be formed after the retina. Okay. So here to have the image always being formed on the retina, you need here what we need here we need to change the focal length okay so we also can we say that power is given as 1 by f yes do you remember yes. this formula power of a lens is given as 1 by f right so if you are adjusting the focal length you are adjusting the power of lens so this property of the human eye or human eye lens is called as power of accommodation. So a very good definition which is asked a number of times is power of accommodation. So what do you mean by power of accommodation? Yes, what do you mean by power of accommodation? It is the ability of 
human eye it is the ability of human eye to adjust its focal length so the ability of the human eye to adjust its focal length is called as power of accommodation so if a question is asked that we are able to see even the far off object and even the nearby objects so what is the reason behind that why how, how are we able to see even a far off object and a nearby object yes anyone can explain abhinav Hmm. Yes, why are we able to see a far off object as well as a nearby object? Yes, because our lens uh, elongate and complex. and our focal lens changes. Ayonija? Aryan? Yeah. Yes? So, could you repeat the question? So, how it is possible that we are able to see very far off objects like the stars also and we are able to see very close objects? Because of retina rod cells? No. So, that simply says that you people are turning off the camera and and not there in the class. <coughs> yeah, sir, can I answer? Yeah. Sir, it's because of the power of accommodation. It is because of the power of accommodation, the special property of our eye lens to adjust its focal length. Our eye lens adjusts the focal length itself. Okay. So, because it's adjust the focal length, so every time the image is formed on the retina, every time we try out, the image will be formed on the retina. Wherever you keep the object, our lens adjusts its focal length so that image will be formed on the retina. Got it? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So, what is this property is called? Name of the property is? Power of power of accommodation okay so which spot is there where no image is formed if blind an image spot. is formed over there yes blind. there is blind spot blind. if an image is formed at the blind spot so you will not be able to see that object you can't see that object if its image is formed at the blind spot apart from the blind spot you have another spot which we call as the yellow spot so you observe there is an yellow spot somewhere here and this yellow spot is the spot which is which has the maximum amount of the road and culture so yellow spot this has the maximum amount of road and concepts here <clears throat> the image is perceived more uh, clear if an image is formed at the yellow spot. Got it. All of you turn on your cameras. Moksha, Sudhamshu. Shubhanj. So, yes, sir. Okay. So, here uh, we have we can see the complete region of okay now the power of accommodation we are discussing about the power of accommodation so the ciliary muscles they play an important role in providing this property of power of accommodation it is the ciliary muscles which adjust the focal length okay the lens doesn't ad adjust it itself it is adjusted by the ciliary muscles of our eyes all the information which is perceived by the retina, that information is turned into electrical impulses and it is carried by the optic nerve. So here we have our optic nerve which carries the information to the brain where it is interpreted. 
the optic now carries the information from the eye to the brain. The region of the eye is divided into two portions. We see here the front portion we call as the aqueous humor. Aqueous humor. And the portion over here inside the eye, this we call as the vitreous humor. These are two fluids which are present inside the inside our eye. They help in maintaining the structure of eye. The aqueous humor and vitreous humor, they help in maintaining the structure of our eye. Okay. So, everyone understood about the human eye? Shall move ahead now? Yes. Okay. So, what is the role of pupil? Yes. The pupil is here. It's the opening between the opening of the lens. The opening between the iris, which we call as the pupil. So what is the role of pupil? This is our pupil. Yeah, Kashwe, what is the role of pupil? Sir, it helps in controlling the in the intensity of light that enters into our eyes. It is the ability of human eye to adjust. Okay, sorry. We have here pupil. The pupil is the portion of the eye which allows the amount of light entering our eye. So, we understand pupil as something like this. Suppose during the night time, when you are awake, so all of a sudden your light went off or you, you switch off the lights. So, all of a sudden, you are not able to see any objects. Are you able to see everything if your lights are turned off? Yes. At that situation, we do not see anything around us. But just it takes us around 2 to 5 minutes so that our pupil again opens up. Our pupil widens up. And when the pupil widens up, then more amount of light enters our eye. Okay. So when more amount of light enters our eye, you will have the object will be seen clearly. Whatever we are looking at, it will be seen clearly. Okay. Can anyone explain me why are owls able to see during the night? Can anyone think of any suitable reason? Why owls are able to see during the night? I guess uh, um, the pupil is very large, so small light enters into the eye. Small light enter into the eye. Can Sir, anyone think of? They, are, they have thinking? more rods. They have more rod cells. Since rod cells respond to the intensity of light or the amount of light entering our eye. So the owls, they have more number of the rod cells. And hence, they can observe or they can see even in a dark light. They can see even at the night time, clearly. Okay. Now, again, so everyone has understood about the night situation. When light winds off, we are not able to see the things. The reason is that our pupil opening is very small. When there was a light, so our pupil was small. We had a small pupil. Okay. When the light winds off, so small amount of light is entering our eye, which is insufficient for us to be observed by, which is insufficient for the, uh, uh, for the things to be observed. Now, Due to, uh, when the senses are received, so our pupil widens up. It, it opens up a lot so that more amount of light can enter into the eye and hence you are able to see it. Okay. Now think of a situation during the daytime. Currently we have summers and we have a bright light outside during the daytime. 
So once you step out of your house, okay, if you step out of your house all of a sudden, so do you observe your eyes not able to be opened up? You find difficulty in opening your eyes? Yes, Aryan, why? What is the reason we have difficulty in opening our eyes? Sir, too much light goes now, sir. Yeah, there is too much of light. So, a lot of light is entering our eye and it takes some time for our pupil again to adjust. So, our pupil again becomes small so that a small amount of light will be able to make us see the things. Got it? So, understood about the uh, all the things which are present in the human eye? Subhanj? Subhanj? Yes, sir. Why you are turning off your camera? There you. There you. See, every time I will not. I'm just warning you because if I drop a message in the group, so that doesn't look good. So, I, give, I don't keep on looking at the camera, but it gives me a good pleasure to see that, yes, all of you are sitting there. So, there, can you tell me, uh, can you tell me here what uh, what is the function of the ciliary muscles? Uh, the, the ciliary muscles, they help in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the expansion and contraction of the eye lens in so that it can change the focal length. Okay. And what is the role of the iris? So the role of the iris, it's to hold the pupil there, like... Hold the pupil? No, I mean, uh, function of iris, it, the intensity of light, right? It adjusts the pupil. Okay. Iris adjusts the pupil. Yes, sir, yes. Okay. Iris adjusts the pupil. Got it? Okay, so now let's move on. Different eye defects. What are the different eye defects which can occur in human eye? So, of course, if we have eye, we have seen many, many eye defects. That is why we have seen people using lenses. We have seen some blind people. We have seen some old age people not being able to see clearly. So, let's see here. Eye defects. So the two main eye defects which we have to see, uh, see is myopia and hypermetropia. There are some other eye defects also. We have to see myopia and hypermetropia. Okay. So our myopia we call myopia as an eye defect, also called as nearsightedness. Nearsightedness means the objects which are nearby, they will be seen clearly. So, nearsightedness, near means close by and sightedness means visible. So, you can see the nearby objects, but you cannot see the far off objects. Okay. So, in the nearsightedness, we have here near objects are visible so uh, what do you mean by nearby objects objects which are near to us okay uh, what about uh, suppose if you are sitting in your class and reading from the blackboard you are watching on the blackboard so that, that will consider as a near object or a far object so depends on where we are sitting in the class right so even if you are sitting at the third branch or fourth branch, then? Then it's a far object. Far object. Okay. So near objects are visible, but far objects are not visible. For example, if you are reading from your book. Okay. So if you are able to read from the book, but you are not able to focus what is there on the board. So this situation is near sightedness. 
near you can see read from the book nearby object and you can't read from the board so that is a far object so near sightedness is the situation where you have near objects are visible but far objects are not visible clearly so this situation is called as myopia we'll see how the myopia occurs let's see what is hypermetropia Hypermetropia, we also call it as farsightedness. So, farsightedness means far off objects will be visible. It means far objects are visible, but nearby objects are not visible. What it? What we call as the hypermetropia. Hypermetropia: the far objects are visible. Uh, far objects are visible, but nearby objects will not be visible. You can't read from your book, but you can see a far off object. You can read from the board. You can see a uh, a bike which is running. Uh, you can identify people who are far off, but you can't see the objects which are close to you. So this situation is called as hypermetropia. Now, let us see what happens in the case of myopia or sh short-sightedness. In case of myopia or short-sightedness, the image is formed before the lens, before the retina. So, let's see how does it look like to have myopia. So, we have our eyeball. This is our eyeball and here we have the eye lens. Okay, so I'm just drawing a closed diagram. We have an eye lens. So, the ray of light which comes from the far off objects, these ray of light, they meet before the retina. Okay. So, these ray of light, they meet before the retina. So, your image is not being formed on the retina. It is formed before the retina. Here, you will have the formation of image. So, in this situation, we observe that image is found before the retina. This is the situation for myopia. Can you think of what could be the possible causes for this myopia? Why this myopia happens? Aryan? Aryan, why this myopia happens? Sir, one minute, sir. Yeah, why do we, why people suffer from myopia? Short. Because of the islands get smaller. Islands get smaller, but uh, our ciliary muscles can adjust the focal length always. Yes or no? We we just saw that ciliary lens muscles are there to adjust the focal length. Sir, uh, that uh, islands will come forward. Like islands come forward. No. Okay. Anyone else can answer? Sir, Sir, it happens when the size of the eye increases. Not the size of eye. We will ha we have here elongation of the eyeball. The possible causes for this is elongation of eyeball. Our eyeball gets elongated. Either you have elongation of eyeball or we have the other region. Maybe suppose our lens has lens has a permanent strain. Permanent strain. That means there is a permanent curvature developed in a lens. Okay. So because of that also we may have our myopia. Can you think of any other possible regions? So the ciliary muscles won't be able to contact with that. I mean, it's like just touch yeah. them. Yes. So that can happen. That can happen with old age. When people get older, ciliary muscles become weak and they are not able to adjust the focal length. So we'll come to that point later because that will happen for both myopia and hypermetropia. Okay. So this situation is myopia. 
Now, can you think of how can we correct it? Moksha, is there any method to correct it? Suppose I want to correct it using a lens. So, which type of lens should I use before the eye? So that the light rays are diverged. Sir, concave or convex mirrors? No, we don't use mirrors. Before the eyes, we use lenses. You have seen people wearing those specs, spectacles. Those are the lenses, not the mirrors. Got it? So those concave or convex, they are the lenses. Now see what we want. We want our whatever light rays are coming. We just want these light rays to be a little bit diverged. If they are entering the eye lens, a little bit diverged like this. Like this. So that after this, after the correction, they again, now they, are, they should be able to meet at retina. This is our A. So how we are able to do that? We are able to diverge this. So which lens is called as the diverging lens? Okay. Concave. Concave. So just before our eye, if we put here a diverging lens, if we use a diverging lens before our eye. So let's put a diverging lens here. Okay, just a minute. You are not able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is, this is the diverging lens. And a diverging lens will diverge the rays of light. It will diverge the ray, rays of light. So, that before being uh, compressed by the eye lens, the rays are diverged and they meet finally at retina. Okay. So, this is the correction of the eye, uh, correction of myopia. So, how can myopia be corrected? Kashmi, how can myopia be corrected? With the help of concave lens. Yeah, myopia, it can be corrected using a concave lens. We need to use here a concave lens. So, here you are supposed to draw two diagrams. One diagram showing the uh, showing your uh, myopia and the other diagram which shows your correction. Okay. So let's see if I'm able to get the second one. Okay. So this diagram shows you myopia and if I want a corrected diagram for this. You see. Now, if I, if I want to correct this, so I will be using a concave lens here in front of the, our eye. I will put a concave lens so that the new light rays which enter, they should be, they should get diverged. Now, they should get here diverged. And after diversion, if they meet, so they will be meeting again on retina and you will be able to see that. Okay, so now I have a question. If a person is having a lens of power minus 4D, which type of defect is he suffering from? Myopia. Myopia. Since the focal length of concave lens is negative, so he's having a negative focal length. He's had, having a negative power. So that means the lens he is using is a concave lens and a concave lens is used for the correction of myopia. But any doubts here for myopia? Okay. So by all of you do attempt the test. Best of luck to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. bye.